squeeze, Bailey's offers a $0 diagnostic with recommended repairs. No cool air, no problem. Call Bailey's today. Congratulations, Westside Patriots, on your three-peat state championship win. Ah! No pay and paperless billing. Wow. Live from Augusta, you're watching News 12, Live at 5. Welcome into Live at 5 as we take a live view here over Beach Island. High in the sky here, we have another hazy day on our hands. 80 degrees outside. It feels like spring and it looks like spring. The pollen, I swear, is multiplying <laughs> by the day. Have you looked up at the, the pine trees? I have. Oh, you, you can see my car it. Too. Oh, yeah. You, uh, yeah, you can definitely... Thanks for that, Riley. A canine deputy and a 17-year-old suspect, they were both shot during a chase in Columbia this morning. Deputies say the chase began around 2 a.m. after a stolen truck was spotted. It ended with a 17-year-old suspect and a 14-year-old getting out and running. The 17-year-old allegedly shot at the deputy but hit the canine, a five-year-old German Shepherd. Deputies then shot the 17-year-old suspect. Both suspects are now in custody. The 17-year-old is facing additional charges for attempted murder and unlawful injury of a police dog. A canine underwent surgery today. The good news, he is expected to survive. Happening today, Atlanta is commemorating three years since the Atlanta spa shootings. It was on March 16, 2021, that eight people were shot and killed inside three separate spas. The killings happening in different counties. Robert Long pleaded guilty in Cherokee County and is serving four life sentences in that case. In Fulton County, the district attorney is seeking the death penalty. South Carolina lawmakers want to crack down on repeat DUI offenders. Today, the state senator, Dick Hartputlian, announced a new bipartisan bill, and it has the support of several advocacy groups, including Mothers Against Drunk Driving, or MAD. Research shows that Palmetto State has some of the highest drunk driving fatality rates in the country. Between 2020 and 2023, which would be uh, 2020, 21, and 22, there were over 4,000 DUI arrests for um, DUI second and above, of which 2,000 of those were pled to DUI first. This bill would prevent plea deals that reduce the sentence of DUI offenders with multiple offenses. Families in natives in Haiti living in... A 21-year-old's life is over after a freak accident at a club car facility in Evans that happened less than a week ago. Authorities say Alyssa Drinkard got caught in the machinery of a conveyor belt last Friday and then later died at the hospital. Her death brings questions into the safety and procedures at that plant. Hallie Turner is live for us in the newsroom, live at 5. And Hallie, you spoke to others who work at the Evans Club Car site. What did they have to say? Yeah, two of Alyssa's coworkers spoke to me. We talked about training, and they tell me there are some safety protocols they review daily. Before she starts her shift, Faye Smith says there is a meeting for employees before entering the workstation. Steel-toed shoes, gloves on, safety goggles, hair up above the shoulders, no cell phones out, and no AirPods in the ears. Just some of what they're told. If any of these rules are not followed, she says club car employees have been told they could be fired immediately. Alyssa had AirPods, and the incident report from the Columbia County Sheriff's Office says Alyssa dropped them. The report says when she went to retrieve them, the chain on the conveyor belt caught her and pinned her in place. Faye says she pushed a red button that was she was trained to stop, that was going to stop the machine. But she says the machine didn't completely stop. Yeah, and I look down there, and her arm is just sitting there, and, you know, a lot of blood. And so I tried grabbing her hand. Like I said, I moved the bucket off the bucket area. Um, I called for help. I had another group lead come around me, and he was like, press the e-stop button, press the e-stop button. So, you know, I'm pressing the button multiple times because I don't know if you got to hold it or nothing like that. I'm just pressing it. It terrified me a lot because I still see it. But I just hate that we couldn't get to her sooner. I, I hate that the e-stop buttons weren't working because... I know for a fact being in the bucket area, the side e-stop buttons don't work. 
only the front ones work or somebody drops the bucket. Now, I reached out to Club Card to ask about the allegations Faye made about the button not working. Club Card has not yet responded. OSHA is investigating the accident. That's standard procedure. Faye says she has not been contacted by OSHA. But coming up all new tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we hear more from Melissa Drinkard's co-worker. Gosh, I mean, no matter what happened, if a button was working or if it wasn't, Faye has been through a terrible ordeal watching her friend get stuck, having to try to help her. I can't even imagine. Absolutely. And Hallie, we hope that you keep asking those questions mm -hmm. and pushing for answers in this case and hopefully bringing some closure to everyone involved. Thanks for staying on top of this for us. A proposal to change how South Carolina's judges are picked has just earned key approval in the state Senate. But questions, those still linger tonight about if these proposed changes will be enough to please critics in and outside of the state house. They've been calling for major reform for months. Our state house reporter Mary Green has the details. Thursday's unanimous approval of this bill in the Senate comes after days of debate in the chamber and more than 12 hours of meetings behind closed doors of a smaller group to hash out an agreement. This bill makes a series of changes to the current judicial selection process, but no major sweeping reforms. Senators say they're satisfied. A compromise that nobody loves, but everybody can live with. And that's basically what's before us today. South Carolina is one of two states where the legislature elects judges, a process in which the governor has no role. Under the current system, a 10-member screening panel narrows the field of candidates for each seat down to a maximum three finalists. The most significant change that Senator's bill would make would expand that to a 12-member screening panel, with the House, the Senate, and the governor each picking four term-limited members. No longer under this bill would the legislature have the exclusive authority to hire and fire judges. We are bringing the executive branch in. Several of the state's solicitors have called for lawmakers who also work as lawyers to be prohibited from serving on the screening panel. They argue decisions from the bench could be influenced if judges believe a ruling against one of these lawyer legislators in court could later cost them their jobs. The Senate bill would still allow lawyer legislators to serve on the screening panel. There are certain questions that wouldn't get asked otherwise. And constitutionally, there is clearly a large legislative role in this process. That screening committee would then forward up to six names to the full legislature as finalists for each seat, up from the three at which they're currently capped, among several other changes to the existing process. The bill's approval comes after increased scrutiny of South Carolina's judicial selection process, which some claim stems from actual impropriety, and others brush off as more of a perception problem. Senators say this bill makes meaningful improvements without totally dismantling the system that many defend as not perfect, but still better than other options. So that our public has confidence in not just who is selected, but how they got there. And after final approval in the Senate next week, this bill will head over to the House, which has its own judicial reform legislation in the committee. Reporting from the State House, I'm Mary Green. In addition to the group of solicitors, South Carolina's governor and attorney general are among those advocating for judicial selection reform. This Senate bill doesn't make as sweeping of changes as any of those officials, though, have called for. Well, locals are raising money for a good cause and getting their steps in while they're at it. We've got that story for you just ahead. Riley? Well, another beautiful dry day across the CSRA, but rain is going to be possible heading into our Friday. I will fully get a forecast just after the break. Time. Okay, thanks, Riley. Raising local awareness and funding for the Special Olympics while also getting some steps in. That's what went down today in Aiken during the Law Enforcement Walkathon. This is the first time that they've had this event since the pandemic. As Taylor Martin shows us, folks were glad to be back. One step for community and one step for Special Olympic athletes. We just let them know that we support them 100%. And something like this, where we can come out with the community, they can um, see the law enforcement vehicles, different things like that. It's an opportunity for them, too, to see that we're there for them. From bowling and tennis to football, basketball, 
Proceeds from this yearly walkathon help South Carolina athletes participate in a wide range of sports without the financial burden for their family. Anything that we can that come to accomplish to help the cost for our spring games, for our athletes, their uniforms. Giving the athletes and members of the community the opportunity to connect with local law enforcement from North Augusta, Aiken, and all of Aiken County. When the local law enforcement leadership uh, takes front view of this, uh, a lot of people willfully follow and everyone profits. The whole community, uh, no one's left out. Giving everyone the opportunity to have some fun for a good cause. Reporting in Aiken, Taylor Martin on your side. And if you missed out but still would like to donate, we'll have a link for you on our website, WRDW.com. Are you having issues with USPS mail taking forever? Well, you're not alone. There's a major backup at an Atlanta area distribution center, and nobody seems to know why. We'll take a closer look next. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. It's the ring of Paramount Plus. and UGA have in common passion, dedication, and a winning team. It's a very unique opportunity to be part of a sports division that takes care of the athletes at the University of Georgia. Being on the sidelines is a true honor and it's a privilege. Every one of them is so thankful for what we do. That really makes it all worthwhile. Medicine is a team sport and we all have to work together. This is a great company to work for. And we got room for you. We're, We're proud, proud to be Piedmont. During the Rooms to Go anniversary, go. truck drivers with trailers full of mail are lining up outside an Atlanta area distribution center. They've been waiting for hours to deliver your mail. But drivers aren't the only ones frustrated. As Tori Cooper explains, both nonprofits and lawmakers are fed up with this slowdown. We've invested a lot of funds in this experience of taking the students from Atlanta to Africa. Carol Hunter and the HBCU Green Fund nonprofit help students at historically black colleges in Atlanta see other parts of the world. But this year, nine out of 11 students from Morehouse, Spelman, and Clark, Atlanta, scheduled to go to Ghana, almost missed out. Hunter says the nonprofit did some of their own digging and allegedly found that students' passports and visas were delayed for weeks at the Paul Meadow USPS Distribution Center. Our director and our staff started making calls and then they realized that the holdup was at the Paul Meadow Center. <laughs> Dozens of trucks filled with mail were also held up at the Paul Meadow USPS Distribution Facility this week. How long have you been on this line? Uh, right now I've been in the line probably about an hour, two hours. The problem that we have though the complaints are still coming into our office every day, all day. Georgia Congressman Mike Collins wrote a letter to USPS Postmaster General Louise DeJoy back in December asking USPS to lay out their solutions after receiving hundreds of reports from Georgians claiming their mail was lost, stolen, or missing. But he says the Postal Service didn't give a solution. It was standard answers. You know, the Postal Service gets questions all the time, and we respond in a timely manner. And, and so we've just got to keep pounding them. We, we've got to make sure that y'all keep it in the news. As of now, USPS has not addressed what is causing the issue. Well, for the weekend, luckily, we do look drive for our St. Patrick's Day parades on Saturday. For actual St. Patrick's Day on Sunday, we could see a few light showers, but nothing crazy. Then look at that seven day just after the break. Doing your job, that's the value of ownership. 
A Savannah beekeeper says part of her swarm lost their way and ended up swarming around a neighborhood. Yeah, this story is all the buzz in the area. Sometimes when a beehive gets too big, part of it will split off in search of a new home. And that's exactly what happened for Tiffany Blevins. When she said she turned around to see a massive swarm <laughs> of her bees fly away. That's not good. They ended up settling in a neighbor's tree dozens of feet in the air, which made the rescue effort very difficult. And get this, a local news crew there tried to get to the bottom of things, but the bees were dodging his questions. Why did you swarm? Yeah, that didn't go over so I well, I guess we'll never it? know. No, we will never know. <laughs> the bees were safely captured and got a new home with another Savannah area beekeeper. Yeah, bees flying away. Not a good thing for you if you like them around, but... A I, swarm, a of, swarm them. of them flying away. And you can't have them just, like, take over a tree. Like, it's good, he could. it's good to have them relocated. Yeah, he yeah. didn't want to talk. I need to know the answer no to comment. that question. <laughs> no comment. Everything is going to be very well pollinated in that neighborhood. <laughs> It yeah, feels great. like everything's well pollinated here as yes. well. Yeah, absolutely. We're, remember, we actually do have an air quality alert that will stay in effect tonight all the way through tomorrow morning. So we are seeing our air quality oh, savings. Roof savers, save your roof, save your money. Riley Hale for your first alert. You're watching News 12 Live at 5 continues. Do you know how to spot a deep fake? What about images created by artificial intelligence or AI? As we get closer to November's presidential election, experts are warning of the dangers of AI and misinformation. Nick Vila explains how to stay on your guard and not fall victim to this rising issue. Artificial intelligence playing a factor in how those will decide in the November election. AI algorithms can be used by both countries to conduct influence operations to try to influence one election, but also try to influence levels of division, polarization, you know, divisiveness, things like that. More talks on how to regulate and control AI started in the Biden administration when ChatGPT became public. So trying to maximize the benefits and then limit the potential dangers, but that can be tough because it's an evolving technology, so sometimes it's tough to know these exact dangers until they emerge, but you can try to be aware as much as possible. Lance Hunter says ways to figure out what's real and what isn't is that if you see something that doesn't look natural, to continue to follow that information and allow others to vet it first. They might be able to determine if it's fake or real. You also look at the account, see who they're following and when they're posting. If their followers look unusual and they're posting at weird times, it could be misinformation. And so I think it will be an important campaign issue, though, you know, how we navigate these waters effectively. And currently with the Biden administration, there hasn't necessarily been hard and fast rules created. There's been a few executive orders, but they're really not that binding. It's been more kind of agreements with AI companies. He says election interference can come from Russia or China. TikTok currently holds a lot of information that the Chinese government could have access to, and this can control what you watch. Why would it matter if China has access to the data? Well, the data could be extremely valuable in conducting influence operations, you know, to influence elections or try to increase division or discord in the United States. And, it, and that's really why there's a concern is China is involved in a number of influence operations at times directed at the U.S. In Augusta, Nick Vieland on your side. All right, to weather now as we take a live look over beach. It's just tomorrow to the weekend for you in just about 10 minutes. All right, thank you, Riley. A former Evans High School teacher and stand-in Santa Claus now sentenced to five years probation for inappropriately touching at least two students. Back in 2022, the Columbia County Sheriff's Office says Gregory Brooks slapped a female student's backside. Deputies say that investigation led to the discovery of a second similar incident. Prosecutors also learned Brooks worked as a Santa around Christmas time, which was halted by a court order. In Brooks' probation, he cannot have contact with anyone younger than 18. He also cannot contact the victims or their families. Brooks is not also allowed to work as Santa Claus for five years.
Take a look at this suspect. He's wanted for Saturday shooting on Barber Road in Richmond County. Deputies say 18-year-old Javon Doe is wanted for shooting two people during an altercation. Doe is considered armed and dangerous. If you know anything or where he might be, call the Richmond County Sheriff's Office. A truck in Evans smashed into two homes in the Jones Crossing neighborhood today. Take a look. The Columbia County Sheriff's Office says it happened around 1230 or so. No word yet on exactly how this crash happened, but a witness told deputies the driver, quote, picked up speed and never stopped. There are no reported injuries. Well, just in, Live at Five, a controversial push to use taxpayer money to put some Georgia kids into private school just narrowly cleared a tough hurdle. Our Georgia State House reporter, Abby Casoris, was at the State House for that vote. This passed by just one vote, getting 91 votes in support. Some lawmakers split it from their party. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. Senate Bill 233, the Georgia Promise Scholarship Act. If your child is in one of the lowest performing schools in the state, you could get $6,500 a year towards a private school education. Republican Representative Misha Maynard of Atlanta switching parties last year. She says this bill is a part of the reason why. In District 56, some of these schools have 2 to 3 percent math and reading proficiency. That means 97 to 98 percent of the children in the school cannot read or perform simple math, but yet some of our colleagues want to tell you that is okay. People who want the voucher say it gives parents a choice. Those again say it pulls funding away from public schools needing resources. Because funding is based on the number of children in the desk. And if, de if the desks are empty because children have gone somewhere else using this voucher, there will be less money for schools. Up to $140 million can be allocated in the state's budget to pay for the program. We need to be making sure that these rural school districts uh, that are claimed to be in the bottom 25% are getting the support that they need. Blake Robinson is a proud Lowndes County Public High School graduate. A study from the Georgia Budget and Policy Institute found that vouchers can drain money from the schools in the red to benefit those in blue. Senators don't want to waste time. They're ready for a vote on the Senate floor. We do expect it will pass there. The governor has already said that he'll be ready to sign the bill. In Atlanta, I'm Abby Casoris. Thanks, Abby. A new dog hotel and spa in North Augusta wants you to know they're open and ready for business. The Ritz Paulton is on Edgefield Road and offers grooming services and doggy daycare as well as overnight boarding. We stopped by today to see some of the pups and get a look at the newly renovated space. This Saturday, the Ritz Paulton is holding a grand opening celebration from noon to 4 p.m. There will be barcuterie boards, tours of the facility, refreshments, and even costume pet or custom pet portraits there so some good things to get for your furry friends the ritz pulses <laughs> i love it okay you hear the saying that lightning doesn't strike the same place twice right but in aiken luck is on your side if you play the lottery for the second time this year a player has won two million dollars and get this both winning tickets were sold at circle k locations just four miles apart the recent winning ticket was sold on Whiskey Road, and in January, a winner bought their ticket on East Pine Log Road. Both winners were from the $20 Millionaire's Club Scratch Off. All right, I hope we have some cousins, Will and Aiken. I, I know, know where I'm going. You? Yep. Well, how confident are you in your axe-throwing abilities? Well, just ahead, we can test to see if you have the luck of the Irish with this local challenge, Riley. Well, for tomorrow, we're bringing back the chance for some rain, maybe a thunderstorm, but good news heading into our St. Patrick's Day weekend. We'll have that full forecast next. Time and quickly by early next week, and then temperatures drop. We actually see highs back down near 60 Tuesday and waking up in the 30s. Thanks, Riley. Do axes and shamrocks go together? Well, they do this week at Broad Axe Throwing in Augusta. That's right. The local business is challenging you for a St. Patrick's Day event. Will Volt picked up an axe. Oh, no. At Broad Axe Throwing, they're putting up little green shamrocks. We're trying to be a part of the culture here on Broad Street, having some awesome things to do uh, during St. Patty's Day week. Owner Vincent Gallinera says these shamrocks aren't just decorations, they're targets. In each of the lanes, you'll see a shamrock uh, on the board, and we're, we challenge the, uh, the throwers that come in uh, to try to hit that shamrock, 
or win a free prize. You can see it doesn't take him long to hit that target multiple times. He's a skilled expert. He'll be competing in the World Axe Throwing Championships next month. But what if you're not quite at his level? We wouldn't have the challenge that's, uh, you know, uh, a gotcha or something like that. It's definitely something that anybody can do. I've only done this once before, and you can see it's not easy for me. I need luck on my side, and maybe I've got it. I don't know if that actually hit, but in Gallinera says it counts. What do I win? You're going to be able to partake in the traditions of uh, the St. Patty's Day week. As a responsible employee on the clock, I turn down the prize. For me, the real prize is the feeling that comes with possibly hitting the target. You can either be lucky or good, and hopefully uh, this year there's the luck of the Irish behind you. In Augusta, we'll vote on your side. Responsible employee he is. If you're interested in taking that challenge, you can stop by any day until Sunday, which of course is St. Patrick's Day. If you have a Roku device, listen up. Hackers may have control of your account. I'm Jamie Tucker. Coming up, I'll tell you how to find out and why everyone should check your passwords to see if they're stolen, and I'll show you how. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. Are you turning 65 soon? At 64 Insurance Group, we know how confusing Medicare can be. Let us guide you through the entire process. And by the way, you don't pay a penny for our services. Don't wait until you're 65 to call. For you, 64.com. Spring of the <laughs> Brett, what are you doing? Eliminating some stuff. First off, pretty sure that's a federal offense. And second, that's for our customers to eliminate their Medicare cards when they come in for a commitment free consultation. My bad. For you, 64.com. The streaming service Roku is notifying users that hackers have stolen their personal data, including credit card information. Uh-oh, Yeah, Will. that's not good. I nope. Roku. But more than 15,000 <laughs> users have been affected. Our consumer tech reporter, Jamie Tucker, has the details. What the Tech, sponsored by Augusta Preparatory Day School. Well, this isn't the biggest data breach in recent years by any stretch of the imagination, but still it's an important one to pay attention to even if you don't have a Roku. The credentials, logins, and passwords were leaked and now they're for sale on the dark web for just 50 cents a piece. This ad discovered by Bleeping Computer shows instructions for the buyer to log into the accounts they purchased, charge things to the credit card on file, and then change the Roku email and password. This will prevent the legitimate owner from logging into their accounts and they may not notice anything's happened until after they get their credit card bill. Now beyond that, this hack is called credential stuffing. When a hacker gains access to someone's password and email address, they start trying the same combination on other services. So if you use the same password for multiple accounts, once it's stolen, hackers can and will log in and log you out of those other accounts. Now even if you don't have a Roku, you should check to see if your passwords and email addresses have been leaked in a data breach by going to this website, haveibeenpwned.com. Enter your email address to see which services might have leaked it. And then, most importantly, check your passwords here. An old and simple password I used a long time ago has been seen 275 times. And if you find one that has been compromised, don't panic, but change it everywhere it's being used. Now, Roku users should go to Roku.com, sign into their account, and verify the locations where you're signed in. If you see an unfamiliar location, change your passwords and log out everywhere. That's what the tech. I'm Jamie Tucker. And Roku is notifying affected customers. It says any unauthorized purchases made on Roku accounts will be refunded. It is spring break season and TSA in Savannah, Georgia says it is seeing a big uptick in travel and of course confiscated items. TSA wants to remind you if you leave self-defense items at home, that is the best idea because things like tasers and pepper spray, yeah, you can't bring that on a plane. Of course, guns and ammo are banned as well, but even items you might not think of, like, I don't know, a bowling, a bowling pin, pin, are not allowed. <laughs> TSA says when these things show up in bags, it can slow you down in security, of course. When in doubt, they say check the TSA's website for banned items. want to say bowling pins are allowed in checked bags, of course, as are 
firearms and yes. other I did have other... a bowling pin like that that said happy birthday, so I do understand that one now a little bit more. It did say happy birthday. Okay. So well, that's fair. There you go. A drill, apparently. Yeah. All of these things you need to make sure, tools, you Hammers, need to yeah. put them in the check bag. Well, with hopes of getting back to the playoffs for the first time since 2017, the Atlanta Falcons are investing a nest full of money into newly signed quarterback Kirk Cousins. News 12 Sports Director Dan Booth joins us now. If there's anything better than getting your go-to order from McDonald's, it's getting it for less in the McDonald's app. Get a free Big Mac when you download the McDonald's app and spend one dollar. ba da ba 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 When dangerous trees threaten your home. We all have a friend who loves the McDonald's hot, crispy filet of fish My friend, you could be that friend. You'll find exclusive deals in the McDonald's app, like two filet fish for $6. Download your filet fish deal today. Oh, when it comes to loving your job, landscaping goats have it easy. Who wouldn't love to just sit around I know, and eat I would all day? love my job to be just easy. Yeah, let's well, take a look at these guys. They're part of Greenville's Parks and Rec Landscaping Crew in South Carolina. It's their job to eat away the invasive species that have grown in the parks over the winter as more folks step outside to enjoy the spring weather. The owner of Roxbury Goat Farm says the animals love their jobs and they jump out of the trailer <laughs> as soon as it's open so they can get to work. A herd of eight goats goats can clean up to 1,500 square feet per day. Wow. It's also a fun site for park goers, too, many of whom are college students who like to visit the goats between classes. I think Fort Gordon, or Fort Eisenhower now, did something like that Oh, as they well. did. They did, and it was wonderful. The airport mm -hmm. did it. Several of our local municipalities have done it. I mean, and hey, free labor. Absolutely. And happy labor. Free pets, maybe. Their eyes. <laughs> Have you ever noticed a goat's eyes? <laughs> yeah. They're like can't rectangles do this right now. They're rectangle pupils. They're crazy looking, but hey, they do they're they're free labor <laughs> and they eat a lot. And as y'all mentioned, we've had some of our local spots uh, take advantage of some good goat work, so good job there. Hey, we do have low air quality in effect tonight and tomorrow morning. If you suffer from those respiratory issues, maybe best to stay inside tonight. We just have a lot of fine particles in the air, pollen, smoke, and just some of that haze. For tomorrow, we should be able to see some of that wash away, the chance for a few showers and thunderstorms Friday, but back to dry weather for our parade Saturday. All right, thanks, Riley. Stick with us. We have more news, weather, and sports coming up after a short break on News 12 at 6 o'clock. This is not you.